Okay. Now let's move to the next question. Anastasia draws a line of best fit on a scattered graph. So what is a line of best fit? The line of best fit means uh, on a scattered graph that where you have a lot of scattered dots or crosses over here, your line must cross through them exactly. So over here, we have to find out the line of best fit. For the first one, if you see the line, it is just too steep. So it is not the line of best fit. For the second one, it is just the horizontal and it is crossing in the middle, but uh, not all, we can say that half at the top, half at the bottom, so it is not the case. So it is too horizontal, so it is also not the case. The third one, it is just straight vertical, so we will just not take it as a line of best fit. But if you look at the last one, it is just passing exactly through the point, so this is the line of best fit. So I will just take here. Okay, now the B part is uh, Jamila draws a different scattered graph. She plots the age of each child in her class against the number of books they read. Now she thinks there is, a, a, there is not a connection between the age and the number of books each child reads, my dear. So we look at the question that there is not a connection. So we have to find out the graph which is not showing the connection between the age and the number of books have been read by the children. So let's look at the first one, number of books and the age of the child right over here. So you will see that this is a random data. There is no link between the age of the child and the number of the books. So let's look at the second one also. Age of the child and the number of books, so there is a link because it is giving us the horizontal line. So there is a link between that. Um, the age is three. And all the children of uh, at age 3, 4 or 5, they are reading that number of books, which are increasing that they are only the reading the number of books. Now, the third one, if you look over here, there is a negative line crossing between them. So there is also a link between them. Okay, they are causing the negative line graph. If we just draw the line. And for the last one, it is the positive. So there is also a link between them. Only the first one is here, which is not showing any relationship between the number of books and the age of the child. So it is the thick one. Now question number eight is, here are two negative numbers, negative 25 and negative 10. Add the two numbers and write down the answer, my dear. So you've got to add the two numbers. So let's do that. If you have to write down this, you will write it in this way, that negative 25 plus negative 10, my dear. You are adding these two numbers. As it is positive sign outside, so it will have no effect on the sign which is present inside. So we will simply write it that negative 25 and negative 10, my dear. Now, when I have to solve it, you will see that negative 25 and negative 10, they have the same sign. Same signs, my dear. So whenever there is a same sign, you will always add the numbers. So let's add the numbers here. It will be 5, it will be 3, and with the negative sign right over here because 25 has the negative sign. So the largest number, whatever the sign the largest number is holding, you will just write down that sign at the end. The answer. So it is negative 35. Now let's move to the next question. Question number 9, calculate 2 by 3 of 18. So it is 2 by 3 of 18. Whenever you have been uh, seeing this word off over here in mathematics, it means that multiply. So you will do that 2 by 3 times 18, my dear. There is nothing in the denominator, so I will just write 1 and then I will solve it out. The top ones will multiply together and the bottom ones, the, new, uh, the denominator will multiply together. So 2 times 18 is equal to? So 2 8 times is 16 and 2 1 times is 2 and 3 and it is 3. Now we have to simplify it. So 3 1 times is 3, 3 1 times is 3 and 3 2 times is 6. So it is 12. Now the second one is 3 by 2 of, of 24. So it is 3 by 2 times 24 by 1. It is exactly the same way. So 3 4 times is 12. 3, 2 times is 6 and 7, and 2, 1 times is 2. Now we have to simplify it further. 
two three times is six and two six times is twelve so my answer is thirty six for the next one Now the next question is complete 141.56 plus 13.213. So it is a simple addition question. So I just have to follow my decimal point over here. So I will put the decimal points first so it will be easy for me to write. So it is 141 and it is 56. And the second one is 213. And before it, it is 3 and 1, which is 13. Now I have to simply add them up together. I will fill up my empty spaces with zero. So it is three, it is seven, seven, four, five, one. So my answer is 154.778. Just like that, I will do my next question, the next part over here of question number 10. So it is 17.512 minus something missing is equal to 4.3 so if i uh, move my okay let's do it right over here 17.512 minus something missing right over here will be equal to equal to 4.3 my dear so over here it is 17.512 i will move it to the other side so here it is adding at the other side it will subtract so it will be the negative question mark is equal to 4.3 minus 17.512 so you can also change the direction or you can also do the other way that you will move your question mark to the other side let me do the other way so it will be easier. Okay. Now I am moving my question mark to the other side. So here it is having a negative sign. At the other side, it will be having a positive one. So this one, when I move over here, here it is having the positive sign. At the other side, it will be subtracting. So for 17.512 minus 4.3. Now let's do that. 17.512 minus 4.3 let's fill the empty spaces with 0 and subtract it 2 minus 0 is 2 it is 1 5 minus 3 is 2 7 minus 4 is 3 and it is 1 so my answer is 13.212 okay now let's move to the next question. Here are six number cards: ten, hundred, thousand, ten, hundred, and thousand. Okay, so these are the six number cards. Each card is repeating twice. So use three cards to complete the statement. Okay, six point two divided by something divided by something is, is equal to six point two times ten and uh, divided by something. Okay, some number over here. So let's try to solve this side first. So it is six point two times ten. So it means that it will be equal to sixty two because the decimal will shift one step forward because it is multiplying by 10 so it will be 62 and let's try to divide it by 1000 i'm going to take 1000 over here so it will be equal to if there is no decimal point so it means that the decimal point lies at the end like this and it is going to move three steps backward so it is one two and three steps backward it means that there is a zero so it will be 0 0.062 now let's try to make this 0 0.062 uh, to the other side as well. So let's try to make it. So it is 6.2. Let's try to divide it by 10. So you will get that uh, one step backward. The decimal will shift one, one step backward. So it will be 0 0.62. Now again, if you divide it by 10, so you will get that. 0.062 which is exactly the same as the other side so here you are using two 10 and 10 cards and here you are using this thousand card one. okay now just like that let's move to the next question okay we will do it in the next video